toward a culture of care and closeness. A few days before shocking the world and creating the big news of the Tokyo Olympics, Simone Biles reflected on her situation. Warning, deep down, that something was not quite right inside her. The great rival of the best gymnast in history was herself. Physically I was fine, but internally I needed to step aside. I had to protect my mind, I couldn't go out and do what everyone wanted me to do. I don't trust myself as much as I used to. There have been a couple of days in these games where I have felt the weight of the whole world on my back. I am not only an athlete, I am also a person. The need for mental health care is an issue that is beginning to become visible after a long period of silence. There is a great burden of psychological suffering in our societies, often manifested in situations of depression and addictions. This is aggravated by the fact that the percentage of diagnosed people who receive mental health care is very low. The World Health Organization, who conceptualizes mental health as a state of well-being in which the individual realizes his or her own capabilities, can cope with the normal stresses of life, can work productively and fruitfully, and is able to make a contribution to his or her community. Mental health is an integral and essential component of health. In times of fear and uncertainty, when threats to one's own survival and the survival of others become one of the major issues of daily life, it would be a mistake to believe that mental health care can wait. Psychiatric illness, unlike physical illness, is often invisible and we do not understand what is going on inside the person. The stigma surrounding mental health disorders creates a further barrier that prevents people from seeking or arranging for appropriate treatment. This social stigma leads to feelings of shame and denial exacerbating the problem rather than solving it. The accompaniment in the field of mental health is sometimes very long, sometimes occasional and always needs to be persistent. The balance of mental health is always delicate and requires patience. Closeness and care are responses born of the Eucharistic reparative charism. Here are some questions that may help you to reflect and then to share in community. Remember to take notes and write down what you want to communicate. What images, feelings, fears, hopes and challenges does the topic mental health arise in you? How can we generate a culture of closeness and tenderness that allies us to care for people who suffer in the psychic dimension? In this post-pandemic time, how can we provide the necessary emotional and spiritual support in our pastoral care? The way to share in community will be through listening circles. Questions for personal reflection. We light four candles saying aloud. We light the healing candle, praying to God for the suffering people, so that troubled hearts and minds, damaged lives and relationships may be healed. Silent prayer. We light the candle of hope, asking the Lord for people living with mental illness, for their communities and their families, that they may have access to adequate treatment for their illness. We pray for their recovery and for better jobs and service opportunities that will help them feel fully integrated into society. Silent prayer. We light the candle of gratitude, asking the Lord for the caregivers and health professionals who offer their dedication and compassion to so many people with mental illness silent prayer. We light the candle of faith, asking God to remove the hopelessness and doubt in those people who feel discouraged because of their illness. Silent prayer. God, you are our liberation and our peace. May your spirit come to us that we may live in deeper union with you, with ourselves and with our brothers and sisters who suffer with mental illness. Give us the courage and love we need to understand one another. Amen.